Good morning, Sister Charlene. Morning. Starting soon, okay? Just over the mountain is the promised land. Lies that holy city built by God's own hand. As our weary footsteps gain the mountain's crest, we can view our homeland of eternal rest. We are near, bring up. We are near, bring up. Jesus. Amen. Amen. A pleasant good morning to everyone. 
hope you guys are doing good and all those who are viewing in our Facebook live page. <clears throat> good morning. Sister Iska and Sister Charlene and Mills, nice to have you guys here. And we pray that the others will come soon. But because of time, we have to start, okay? Um, at this time, let us open with a word of prayer and ask the Lord that his Holy Spirit will continue to, to lead us as we go forward within this study this morning. So let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being alive, for being in the right frame of mind. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, your mercy, your long suffering over our lives. As we near your coming, Lord Jesus, I pray that we as individuals will really purpose in our hearts to be more like you. I pray, Father, Lord, that our character, that your character will be seen in us and that our lives, we will prepare our body to receive the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. So, Father, we thank you even as we continue to study within this book, last events. We know there are so much things that you want to teach us. Help us that our hearts will always be open to receive your word. Be with the brethren, Father, who made it possible to be here and who couldn't. I pray, Father, Lord, that you will continue to lead us and direct us. Help all in our family life. I pray that you may work out everything. I pray, Lord Jesus, with our children. You know, sometimes we struggle on that point. Be with them, Father, in our workplace, Jesus, that you may continue to help us to shine our light. Continue, Lord Jesus, to help us to be because of light wherever we may be. And help us to tell someone about your goodness. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And amen. So again, a pleasant good morning. This morning, I'm kind of flying solo. <laughs> but my husband is in another account. I see him trying to come in right now. So bless morning to everyone. This morning, friends, we are looking at part four. In chapter 17 of the book, The Last Event, we are are still dealing with the seven last plagues and the wicked. Chapter 18, however, is also the seven last plagues, but it's focusing on the righteous. So I encourage you guys to really study that book as we continue to, to learn what we ought to expect in the last days. And we know that we are living in the last days, brethren. So, okay, my screen is shared. But right before, brethren, we get into this, I, I really want to share a thought to, to us all who are here this morning and who are viewing, right? And who will be viewing later on. I really want to share a thought. Now, this thought was shared to me while I was watching something yesterday. And I said, it is so important, friends, that we really understand. So this thought is taken from the book St. John chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 59 to 66. And I want us to really understand what is being transpired here within God's word because everything that is written, it is written for all time also, okay? It says, and the word of the Lord says, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this saying, when they have heard this saying said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus, when Jesus knew himself, when Jesus knew in himself rather, that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend thee? Really and truly, what was trying to be, um, what is being conveyed here, Jesus was telling them, whosoever drinketh my blood and eateth my flesh, he was trying to tell them a spiritual lesson. But some of the people who have followed him for so long couldn't understand. It goes on to say, what? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up 
where he was before. It is a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Everything within the Bible, brethren, once it was written, once it is written, it is spirit and life. But there are some of you that believe not. It will have some of us after hearing all these truths, after experiencing God in such a way. Jesus healed the sick people. He fed the hungry. He clothed them. He gave them the word of life. But yet still, some did not believe. It says, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. And who should betray him. Just as us brethren, it's a frightening thing to know that we can be here learning all these truths and yet still we may betray our Lord. And that is why we have to continue to cling to the man Christ Jesus. It says, it goes on to say, and he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man come can come unto me except they were given unto him of my father from that time many of the disciples went back listen at that time brethren many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him so we see here brethren a very terrible condition to be in and it had me thinking because you know sometimes you think that okay you are walking with christ and you think that you, you and Christ is forming this relationship, but God knows our heart. Many of us are struggling in our Christianity. We are striving to become whom God wants us to become, and that's a very good state to be in. But yes, still in this time, there were some who saw all that Jesus did. They experienced it firsthand. But when Christ was telling them a certain teaching, they find it was a hard teaching. And they walked with him no more. But when we are coming to a time, or we are in a time where some things that we are going to learn may be very hard to digest. But I guarantee once we allow God, Holy Spirit, to do his thing within our lives, we will understand. Although it may be hard to understand now, God will equip us with his Holy Spirit to make it clear unto us. Sometimes you may be studying your Bible. And some of the things just don't make sense. It's not adding up. We ought to believe it as good brethren and trust God and God will make it be known unto us. I pray that none of us who are here, after experiencing God and seeing God work out in our lives, in our families, in our children, in our neighborhood, if some point we may reach a point that we don't understand something, I pray that we will not turn back and do not walk with God anymore, but we will trust him even if we do not understand and continue to pray for clarity that God, Holy Spirit, will make it known unto us. So this is just a little thought I would like to, to share with us as we get into to this fourth um, part in the 17th chapter of the book last day. So before I move on, because this is an open forum, anyone have anything to add? Good morning, Mr. Bishop. Okay. So let's move on, brethren. In the last part of the book, last day, and within this chapter, it says, the laws condemn their false shepherd. This is a point, brethren, where God is calling us not to put our confidence in man, but to place our confidence in him and him alone. Because a time is coming where the lost will condemn their false shepherds. It says church members 
who have seen the light have been convicted. For they saw the light and was convicted. But who have trusted the, sal the salvation of their souls to the ministers. We learn in the day of God that no other soul can pay the ransom for their transgression. A terrible cry will be raised. A terrible cry will be raised. I am lost, eternally lost. Men will feel as though they could rend in pieces the minister who have preached falsehood and condemned the truth. Now, reading this, brethren, it brings to my mind someone we met while we were on the field. Now, we have to realize that although some people does not believe in what we believe in at this point, Sometimes they are sincere believers still because they just don't know. And, and we met a gentleman, my husband and I, we met a gentleman who was so convicted in what he believed in to be true because what he was taught. And as, as we hear him speak, as I hear him speak, it just brought back to mind the position that I was in while I worship in a certain denomination. And they led our minds to believe in things such as the secret rapture, the secret rapture, and how things are going to play out, even Armageddon and all these things. And I watched him and said, you know, I said, you know, God can work with you because you are sincere in what you believe in. But brethren, being sincere in what we believe in and following someone blindly is two different things. We must reach a point where we don't trust our salvation to man or put it in man's hand. Because as the reading rightfully said, those who place their salvation within men's hand still will be lost because the cry was raised, I am lost. We have no excuse. God has given us his word. And within his word, we can find salvation, brethren. Everything there is laid out for us to study. And once we continue to study God's word and ask the Holy Spirit to give us the right and the correct interpretation, we will not be deceived. However, it doesn't diminish the fact that there will be people who will be lost because they place their whole trust in their shepherd, who eventually they will recognize that they are shepherd but when god is calling us a little higher in our spirituality god wants us to place our trust our confidence our love our desire our hope our willingness our all in him and once we do that friends we will not be deceived at no point at no point so there are people who with a terrible cry will raise out in this time that they are lost. And not only lost, they are eternally lost. And at, at this point, they will feel to rent into pieces their shepherds, whom they loved very dearly before this time. So brethren, there are no excuse for those who, who are lost if they place their trust in men who is really wolves in sheep clothing. And how would we know who are wolves in sheep clothing? Brethren, the Bible clearly states, we will know them by their fruits. All unite in heaping their bitterest condemnation upon the ministers. Unfaithful pastors have prophesied smooth things. You know, every time you hear them, it's just all about prosperity and all about, you know, things to hype up their members and keep them in sin and nothing to really wake them up to the times that we are living in. Smooth things. It says they have led their hearers to make void the law of God. I remember one of my last time attending my previous church, um, a pastor, a visiting pastor was on the, on the rostrum and that pastor really said no longer we have to obey the law of the old testament no longer we have to obey god's holy sabbath 
And that was one of the, the, the last strike. And I did not went back there. We see here, brethren, that there are shepherds who really will lead their flock to make void the law of God and to persecute those who would keep the law. Now, it in their despair, the reading is saying, these teachers confess before the world their work of deception. It comes a time where these very self same teachers will confess before the world their deception. The multitudes are filled with theory because they are re really recognizing that they are deceived. We are lost, they, cr they cried, and you are the cause of our ruin. And in, and, and they turn upon their false shepherd. Now they turn upon their false shepherds, the very one that once admired them most will pronounce the most dreadful curses upon them. So are we to place our, our trust and our salvation in, in man's hand, the answer will continually be no. The answer will continually be no. Sister Iska is, is quoting and she's saying in Isaiah 8, 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this world, it is because there is no light in them. And that is, that is so true. If someone is leading you away from God's will, and that is, Every part of God's word, every verse, every scripture, every word. If they are leading you away from that word, then that means that they have no life in light in them. And that is why we have to prove everything through God's word and God's word only. Anyone have anything to add before we move on? Yes. So it goes on to say, friends, and I perceive that everyone is listening. <laughs> we are so quiet this morning. It says, here we see that the church, the Lord's sanctuary, was the first to feel the stroke of the wrath of God. Who will be first to feel the wrath of God? God's professed people who did not live up to the light that they had. The ancient men, just as we have read in, I think, two devotions before in Ezekiel 9, 6, those to whom God has given great light and who had stood as guardians of the spiritual interests of the people and betrayed their trust. So those leaders, those ministers, those pastors, those shepherds who had so much great light but withhold it from their poor members, from those who look up to them daily, who did not correct them when they were in sin, just as Eli. Remember Eli's two sons, Eli's sons, Hophni and Phineas? He knew what they were doing. He know that they used to eat the meat raw. He know that they used to sleep with the woman even at the door of the sanctuary. But yet so he did not correct them. And if we really study, we will see their fate, how they end up. And we, if we still withhold in correcting even people who look up to us, when we are seeing them going wrong, if we don't correct them, brethren, that same faith that the people who are going wrong will have, we will also share in that same faith. And that is why God teaches us so many lessons, even with dealing with our children, for those who have children. We cannot see them going wrong and do not correct them. 
And just as it is in a family life, just so how God wants it to be within his people, among his people. If, brethren, our shepherds and our leaders are not correcting us and showing us what we ought to be doing at this time that we are living in, because they are constantly speaking smooth things and wants us because they don't want us to be offended. Then brethren, that is a very disastrous position to be in. But God wants our eyes to be open. God wants us to see the truth. God wants us to be aware of the times that we are living in. And the only how we can know that is really by prayerfully studying God's word, prayerfully studying God's word, brethren. So at this point, the wrath of God will be firstly upon those leaders who refuse to correct, to show the flock the right way. And this is very serious, eh, brethren, because we may constantly be only looking at our church pastors or whatsoever, but in our own sphere, we are leaders. God has called us to be leaders and they are, there may be just one person who is looking up to you. And it is your duty to show them that right path, to show them that right path. And if you are seeing them going on a certain way, it is our duty to correct them. And if we fail to do so, the same fate upon these false shepherds will be our fate, obviously, because we serve a God who does not show favoritism? Who does not show favoritism, brethren? It goes on to say the sixth consisted in the dry, drying up, which is the play. The sixth play consisted in the drying up of the Euphrates, the river Euphrates, right? Followed by free, unclean spirits going forth to deceive the nations of the earth into fighting the battle of the great day of God Almighty. It says the spirits of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the world and to the whole world rather to fasten them in deception and urge them under you to unite with Satan now in the last struggle against the government of heaven. So here we see here that there's a battle which is called the battle of Armageddon. And yet still, even to this point, Satan will still be deceiving the people and giving them false hope, the thing that they could overthrow the kingdom of heaven. So you see how far deception goes? It don't start one time in this instant. Satan tries to deceive us little by little, making us think, okay, it's okay to do this. Nothing is wrong with that because the majority is doing it. Being deceived little by little by little. We are seeing people doing certain things and nothing happening to them. So we perceive that it is okay. Until with our own eyes and our own heart, we will see that we are in error and yet still be comforted and think that we are doing the right thing. Brethren, this is totally deception. And that is why in Matthew 24, Jesus said constantly, take heed, lest no man deceive us. Because in the last day, is deception is going to let us astray, brethren. We, are, we will be deceived if we don't fix our eyes upon Jesus. So we see here, Free and clean spirit. Satan is coming all out. There's a point of time, brothers, when we know that God Holy Spirit will be withdrawn from this earth. And Satan will come full force upon God's people to try to cause us to deny Christ, to try to cause us to curse God, just as Job wife tried to let him to do so. But yet still we have that assurance and that hope that once we stay connected in Christ, once we place our confidence and our trust wholly and solely in Christ Jesus, we will not be deceived. 
although Satan will try to overthrow the government of heaven, brethren, we can stand firmly because we know that we are on the winning side and we are on the winning side alone. But it doesn't just come to this point. And that is why I, I read in John chapter 6 because it is very, very important for us to stay connected to Jesus because if we do not stay connected to Jesus, little things Satan will throw at us will cause us to really deny and to go back to our previous lives. If we take our eyes off of Christ, just as Peter took his eyes off of him and sunk, Virgin is very, very important, especially in this time that we are living in. We may not have the opportunity to come back to Christ if we fall away now. So what are we all to be doing at this point? We are to be searching our lives. And I constantly say this because it's true. If we, can, if we profess and we are saying that we are living in the anti-typical day of atonement, then we ought to know the attitude and the mindset of the day of atonement. And we are, we are living in that time. We are to be searching our lives. In chapter 18, within this book, the chapter that we'll be looking at next, it says that Satan will try to cause us little things in our character to separate us from God. Little seeds that will be sown in our character. But we need to be focused. We need to take our eyes off of worldly things and fix our eyes heavenward. At the end of it all, nothing of this world will make sense anymore. We have to compare it to what God wants to prepare for us. And in doing that, our minds and our desire will be fixed heavenward, brethren. It's very important because these disciples in John chapter 6, they saw Jesus do all sorts of things. We never see with our own eyes Jesus did anything. But we ought to believe by faith. And these people saw what Jesus did. But yet still, when he spoke something to them that they did not understand, they didn't take time to understand it. And they followed him no more. Let that not be us this morning. Anyone have anything to add? Then we can look at the seventh plague. We have went to the first plague, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and now we are looking at the seventh plague. It says we as God's people, right? We need to study the pouring out of the seventh vial. And that is taken from Revelation 16, 17 to 21. It says the powers of evil will not yield up the conflict without a struggle. You think Satan will allow us as God's people to just walk on this pilgrim pathway without a struggle, brethren? If we believe that, we are already deceived. If we are not going to anything to build our character and our trust in God, then something is wrong. Every aspect in our lives, brethren, we will see some little things that we need to overcome, that we need to pass through. Satan will not leave us alone because he knows what the path that we are going towards is what he can never regain. And he knows that right now God is making up his number. So he knows that we who are faithfully walking on this pilgrim pathway are really threat to his kingdom. Because we have Christ living within us. And because of that, he will not leave us alone. He will never leave us alone. So the powers of evil will not yield up the conflict without a struggle. But providence has a part to act in the battle of Armageddon. Now, when the earth is lighted with the glory of the angel of Revelation 18, remember that angel who will proclaim, who will proclaim even assisting in the third angel's message. 
it says, and that he also said that angel, that messenger, which God is using us to say, come out of here, my people, Revelation 18. It says, the religious elements, good and evil, will awake from slumber. And the armies of the living God will take the field. So you know, sometimes, brethren, and even I find myself also being a victim of that, we more focus on the opposite side or on Satan's role in this whole thing and frighten ourselves into believing that, you know, Satan is coming very hard at us. But yet still, we have to remember that we serve the God who have already won this victory. And we need not to forget that. And once we stay on his side, we are winners. So although Satan has his work to do, God have his also. We need to stay faithful on the part of God. God will see us through. God will see us through. God wants us to carry his message forward, to be faithful to him. God wants us not to be lukewarm, but to stay on fire for him. And to really do what God has called us to do as a people, whether it be collectively, individually, as his church, his spiritual church, God wants us to remember that at all times. So we see here that religious elements, brethren, good and evil, will awake from slumber. And then the armies of the living God will take the field, will take the field. It said the seventh plague. Thus has inspiration described. The last judgment, which is to be inflicted in the present condition of things upon those who have. Okay. 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 Family life brethren. As when we see here that within the seven plagues, that some of the plagues are local in their application, but this one is poured out in the air. I was studying and really understanding the whole concept of the seventh plague and why it is released within the air. But it goes on to say the air in enveloped the whole earth. So this plague, remember we were studying that the plagues will be falling there and there and it will not be universal. But it follows that this plague will envelop equally the inhabitable globe. That this plague, brethren, the seventh plague will be poured out upon the air. Now, this is something to really take in consideration. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. We know a time is coming, brethren, where Michael will stand up. Thus, all is finished. The cup of human guilt had been filled up. The last soul has availed itself of the plan of salvation. So everyone will have the time to choose. To choose if they are walking on the path of Christ or if they are walking on Satan's path. The book are closed. The number of the saved is completed. So God is making up his number, whatever that number may be. The final period is placed to this world's history. The vials of God's wrath are poured out upon the corrupt generation. The wicked has drunk them to the dregs and sunk into the realm of death for a thousand years. Reader, where do you wish to be found after that great decision? Now we have to internalize something, brethren. You know, we always have it as a cliche, as, you know, 
I want to be saved. I want to be saved in God's heavenly kingdom. But we need to really internalize. Are we really living a life to be saved? God has done his part, you know. God has paid the ultimate price for us as, as human beings. But now we have a decision to make. And that decision, brethren, is either we choose Christ's side or we choose Satan's side. There is no middle ground in this. It's either we are living for him or we are not living for him. We have our choice and God will not infringe on in our choice. God will allow us to choose the path we want to choose. Now, he desires us to choose his path because he loves us. But he will not force us to choose his path because love is not forced. So, brethren, really and truly, the opportunity and the decision is ours. We have to make up our minds to know, okay, we are on Christ's side, and although it may be tough because the servant is not greater than the master, although it will be tough, yet still God will not give us more than we can pay. And he is with us to go through every situation that we will encounter. Or we choose the so-called easy side and surrender our will to Satan where our lives here may look happy and fair, but at the end of it, we will have to pay with our soul. Brethren, to me, this decision is clear. And the easier one really is being on Christ's side. Because although we may face all sorts of things in this world, our eternity will lie and be whole in Christ's hand. Where he is going to prepare a place, just as John 14 tell us, he has going to prepare a place for us and we know within that place will be no more of the things that we are facing here on earth, which is just temporal. Brethren, God loves us with an everlasting love. And I think it's very important you know, oftentimes my husband and I, we will, we will say, we be more focused, you know, yes, the three angels message or is, is the last day message, but it's very important for us to understand the love of Christ towards us. When we truly understand that, okay, Christ loves us and it doesn't matter if they pass the Sunday law, it doesn't matter when the image of the beast will be formed, it doesn't matter we may not be able to buy and sell. Yet still, because Christ loves us, he has our best interests at heart. And whatsoever we may encounter, he is right there with us. We need to really understand the love of God towards us as his children. We could go through anything once we understand that Christ loves us and he is with us. And he is with us. We really need to keep this in our minds, even while we go through our little struggles and our trials day to day, that Jesus loves us. I have seen the tender love that God has for his people. And it is very great, brethren. God's love towards us is very great. God is not this tyrant God just waiting to kill us as soon as we sin. But God's love towards us is very great. I saw angels over the saints with their wings spread about them. Now, this is something to really, to really feel so happy and excited about because God has his angels there with their wings spread about us. Each saint had an attendant angel. And if the saints weep, through discouragement, like some of us, we may be feeling discouraged. Or we're in danger. The angels that ever attended them would fly quickly upward to carry the tidings. And the angels in the city would cease to sing. Imagine that. When we are discouraged, when we are in danger, brethren then Jesus would commission another angel to be sent to encourage us. 
to watch over, to try to keep them from going out of the narrow path. And that is why I so love the book, The Pilgrim's Progress, because it teaches us reality. And even our prophet Ellen White, she endorses that book. Because we are all on this path to the celestial city, which is heaven. And we will have all sorts of things be thrown at us. All sorts of things, whether we have to go through vanity fear. Sometimes the people of the world may be so strong. We may end up, be quiet, honey. We may end up in the spawn of the spawn, the swamp of the spawn, sorry. We may feel discouraged. Mr. Worldly Wise Man may try to discourage us and pull us back. We may think that we are saved of our own righteousness. We may even be climbing the hill of difficulties. But yet still, we must be encouraged that even though we feel discouraged, that God will send his angel to come down, to spread his wings, and to encourage us, to watch over us, to try to keep us from going out of that narrow path. So we see how much things that God will do for us to keep us from preventing us to face that seven last place, brethren. To face that seven last place. And if God, no more. If God will encourage us, will watch over us, and will keep us, try to keep us from coming out of this path. If we come off this path and follow Christ no more, it's because we our hearts are hard, we do not love God, and we are totally deceived by dream. It says, and would not be comforted by them. Let me read over that. But if they do not take heed to the watchful care of these angels, and would not be comforted by them, but continue to go astray. The angel will look sad and weep. Imagine that. That is how much God wants us to be saved, brethren. So anytime we are feeling discouraged, think about that. That God has sent his angels to encourage us. And there are so many promises within God's word that we can rely on. We just need to read it. And that is why God given us his word. So we can be encouraged by dream. Sometimes we feel discouraged. Sometimes we feel to just give up. But heaven is on our side and is trying their best to keep us from strain. So imagine our angels will feel sad and even weep. They will bear the tidings upward and all the angels in the city would weep because we have come off the path by dream. And then with a loud voice say, Amen. But if the saints fix their eyes upon the prize before them and glorify God by praising them, praising him, then the angels will bear the glad tidings to the city. And the angels in the city will touch their golden harps and sing with a loud voice, hallelujah. And the heavenly archers would ring with their loving song. And I said, let me really end on this encouraging note because I know many of us will be feeling discouraged at this time, brethren. Many of us, we will be feeling discouraged at this time. But God wants us to know that whatsoever we may be undergoing, whatsoever we may be facing, God have us in his hand. He is willing to encourage us. He wants to motivate us. But we have something to do also. We have to keep our eyes upon him. And we have to constantly be praying, fasting, and studying his word. If we do not do that, we will stop following Christ. We will stop following Christ, brethren. So the encouragement is here this morning. Although we know the seven last days will be falling, but yet still we know that Christ is with us through everything we undergo. 
and he wants to continue to encourage us. He wants to continue to walk with us. He wants to live within us once we allow him to, right? So, brethren, at this time, I, I'm not sure if anyone have anything to say before we take our prayer request. Anyone have anything to add? Anyone have any prayer requests or like the petition? Yes, Brother Bishop, you can go ahead. Your hand is raised, unmute your mic. Um, well, I want to suggest one um, prayer request that, well, I, at least for me, um, that through this time, what, what will drive us is that we need to pray that we will fall in love with Jesus. If we don't fall in love with Jesus, we will not be able to stand. It's just like when we see only what will make us stand with our children or anyone or even our spouse is that we fall in love with them. And even though even though they might fall, we because of the because of our love for them does give, give us that extra zeal to go forward. And this is why Christ mentioned in John 14, 15, if you love me. So he mentioned his problem is that we really don't love him because our nature is always bent to go against him. So I think that one of our prayer requests, at least my prayer request is that Lord help me to love you. And that's it. if you watch, if you watch um, Joseph experience when, when he was going, when um, he said, how can I sin against my God? So meaning that because Joseph have loved God so much that he preferred not to sin against him and and then we and with sin against him and then sin against his lord so therefore you see that because love must be the governing factor so i pray that my prayer request this morning is that lord help me to love you help me to pray that lord will help me as an individual to love him amen amen it's so true because if we don't love christ we will not be able to stand right we will not be able to stand anyone else Okay, so shall we pray? And I think someone has their mics on mute. Someone wants to say something. Morning, Sister Mel, everybody. Just um, want to request a prayer request, you know, for strength and, you know, for guidance. And also what brothers Kevin Sun say, you know, to fall in love with Jesus so that we'll be able to hold on. Amen. 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 Yes, my sister. Okay, so let's pray at this time. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, as we end, or as we near the end of this world's history, we pray, Father, Lord, that we will fix our eyes upon you constantly. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus, not to be led away by, by our own feelings or inclination, but that we will constantly look to you for guidance, Lord. As the request goes forward, Father, we all ask, Lord Jesus, that we will fall in love with you individually. Father, Lord, you know, oftentimes, sometimes we, we love someone because of what we can receive. And as soon as something happens, we do not love them anymore, but I pray that that type of love will not be, Lord Jesus, the love that we desire from you, but we will love you because, Lord Jesus, you first love us. Father, you have done, Lord, everything possible to ensure that we are saved. And your love is not like man. But I pray, Lord Jesus, that we, Lord Jesus, will purpose in our hearts 
master love you and how could we love you if we do not know you? So help us, Lord, to study your word and to draw closer to you. That our relationship will be strengthened, that we will, Lord, God, fall in love with you more and more. Lord, we know that it's only because we, when we fall in love with you, we'll be able to stand. We will not care for our lives anymore. We will recognize what, what, whatsoever we are going through is because the world hates us because we love you. So give us the strength, Lord Jesus. Even our dear sister's requests that you may help her to keep faithful, Lord Jesus, to you. Help her, Father, Lord Jesus, whatsoever she undergo. That you may continue because we know that angels are there to insist in encouraging that you will continue to impress upon her life that she can do all things through you because you shrink in her. And that goes for all of us, Lord Jesus. As we near the end, Father, many will be discouraged. Many will not follow you no more. And Lord, we pray today that that will not be us. That we will not have, Lord Jesus, a form of godliness and denying the power therein. But help us, Lord, help us not to be like, like um, Judas who experience worldly repentance will help us to be Lord Jesus as your Peter who even if we should fall that we will experience godly repentance Lord Jesus and be drawn closer to you so Father Lord help us not to sell out our spirituality or of eternity because Lord Jesus what Satan is is doing in this world today but help us to keep focus. Help us to keep more focus on you, Lord Jesus, than even what is happening in this world today. Help us not to be deceived, but help us to cling to you, Jesus. Everyone who are, who, who are here this morning, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you may continue to encourage us, that you may continue to give us that desire to study your word. And that you may continue to help us to press forward. Even though we do not see, Lord Jesus, where you are leading us now, we trust you because we know that we are being led by you, the creator God. So be with every family represented here. You can continue to be with our dear sister, sister Shakira. I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead her by your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you may continue to encourage her. Even Sister Charlene, Lord Jesus, and even our Sister Tai Tai, who is here. Continue to help us, Lord Father, to see and to be encouraged. Help us not to neglect prayer because we know reading, Lord Jesus, the Bible is really you speaking to us and prayer is we talking to you. So be with everyone here, our dear brother Ratan and brother Bevon. Sister Mawasi and my dear sister. Nanu and Sister Iska Lord and all who is watching on our Facebook. Help us to strengthen us and help us, Lord Jesus, to be a part of your faithful people as we continue to, to dwell within this day. Help us to always remember, Lord Jesus, and our minds will not stray on things that are of this world, but our minds will stay heavenward. And that we will do what you are calling us to do. Place someone in our path that we will tell them about you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen, brethren. I pray that God will continue to, to guide us and encourage us. Amen. As we continue to stay faithful to him, okay? God bless you all and stay encouraged because the time is almost expired. Let us not give up now because this, this race has all almost over, okay? God bless you, Sister Shadi. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>